Hello, and welcome to the Global Studies News Network. I'm your host, Chris Getchell. Our top story tonight. There was concern today when a group of students performed the hokey pokey in gym class and were unable to stop. Fortunately, after an intervention from Ms. May, the students were able to turn themselves around. More 11. And now a word on trade. I want to talk to you about the USMCA or the United States Mexico Canada Agreement. Um, you might know it uh, by a different name, which has been talked about in the past, which was NAFTA. NAFTA originated in the early 90s, I believe it was 1994, and it's, it was an agreement between United States, Canada, and Mexico to make trade between those countries easier. Um, it eliminated many tariffs, and a tariff is a tax on goods um, from one country to another. So, for example, if the United States was sending something to Canada to sell there, Canada might impose a tariff on it. So the United States would have to pay a tax or the company that was going to send it there would have to pay a tax in order to sell it there. And it works the same way. It worked the same way if Canada was doing that or Mexico was doing that in the United States, the United States might impose a tariff. So when tariffs are eliminated, then you don't have these don't have to pay the tax on it, and therefore the cost of goods theoretically would be lower. Think about it like this, um, and this can't happen because of the laws in the United States, but if there was a tax on goods that you wanted to see from Minnesota that you wanted to sell in Wisconsin and vice versa, okay, that doesn't happen here, okay? The, um, the You can go to Wisconsin and buy something, just like you can go, they can come to People from Wisconsin can come from Minnesota and buy something. So um, hopefully it solved most of the disputes, okay? And, and the idea was that it would encourage business growth, which did happen somewhat. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, the USMCA is simply an updated version of NAFTA, okay? So President Trump renamed NAFTA and changed a couple of things, okay? So it still eliminates tariffs. However, it did give um, farmers in the United States more of an opportunity to sell their dairy products in Canada. Um, NAFTA, that those were left out of NAFTA um, in the 90s, and now um, dairy products are able to be sold in Canada. Um, it also helped Mexico uh, hopefully, um, by strengthening the labor laws. Um, many companies sent things to be manufactured in Mexico because they didn't have the same workers' rights uh, agreements as the United States, so they didn't have to get paid as much. And so um, this hopefully um, will help protect some of the workers in Mexico. It also created tougher environmental laws um, because oftentimes companies uh, in would send jobs to Mexico because they didn't have to follow the same environmental rules that they do in the United States. Um, and so uh, it made things cheaper then as well. And something called the 75% rule is in place um, for auto cars and, and machinery. And we'll talk about that in just a sec. What is the 75% rule? We'll look at that. So um, some things that we can um, learn about this is um, trading policy is very important, especially in the world we live in today, because we really live in a global society. Um, we don't just live in the United, I mean, we live in the United States, but the things that we get, and we'll look at that during this unit, is from around the world. We live in a world now, because of technology, that you can talk to someone or send something around the world in 24 hours or less. You can talk right now to someone on the other side of the globe. And so um, we really live in a global society. Um, NAFTA and the USMCA, they're not the same, but they're 
not that different. USSMCA made a few changes. Um, the, uh, the, hopefully these agreements have secured better working conditions for workers. Um, politicians always talk about this stuff. Um, and when, uh, you know, I'm not here to say what's good and what's bad, but if you listen, especially in the, you know, it's an election year, um, you know, these ideas often come up about workers' rights and equal pay or fair pay um, and the environment. And so it's very, it can be very politicized um, by uh, the politicians of the United States. Um, they don't always, this doesn't solve every problem, okay? Um, but it does help because there are specific rules that countries have to live by. Um, and so uh, uh, policies can be settled easier because of these agreements. Um, and this is interesting, um, but the strongest economy, economy often gets the best deal. And that would be the United States in this case amongst the three countries, okay? The United States and thus the residents of the United States often get the best deal because as consumers, um, our prices are lower often because of the free trade agreement. And, um, but in all three countries, consumers benefit by having lower prices because those tariffs are not being uh, paid. So some of the positive things um, are that American businesses get some advantages, especially when it comes to either creating or manufacturing, um, especially things like electronics, um, agriculture, they can trade things across the border. Um, workers' rights, uh, they still have a long way to go, especially in Mexico. Um, but this hopefully is a step in the right direction. Um, they, they added some workers' rights to the USMCA agree, agreement. And, um, you know, all of us benefit from hopefully less expensive products. Some of the th negatives or the cons are um, in the environment is still a big concern. Um, and uh, especially, I would say, in Mexico, where they don't have as many environmental laws in place and companies can go down there and take advantage of that. Um, uh, protectionism um, means that there's still some limits and um, so not all goods and services are covered under this agreement. And so countries still um, try to take care of, I guess is the best way to say it, some of the countries that are and people that are in their country. And so they have some limits on what can be um, manufactured on, on different parts of the border. And also, you know, how many parts, for example, from their country have to be used in any one product. And, um, you know, Canada and Mexico say that the deal is not as good for them, although they are still a part of it because they still see benefits. Here's a little uh, Venn diagram. You can see that on the left side uh, is the old agreement of NAFTA. Um, and so, uh, you know, you can see it was started in 94. And then um, cars here are the example. Any car made uh, um, to avoid taxes or tariffs in North America had to have 62.5% um, of the parts had to be manufactured in North America. That has been upgraded now in the USMC to 75%. Okay. Um, as far as pay goes, um, in Mexico, uh, the average uh, uh, auto worker made only 2 to $2.50 an hour. So that's been raised significantly um, up to $16 an hour. Um, and then uh, in Canada, there's quite a few restrictions on dairy and agriculture, and many of those have been lifted. Um, you know, uh, there are still some issues that are 
being settled or still up in the air. Um, and they're still concerned about intellectual property, which means ideas, you know, the use of ideas that someone has created or a company has created. Um, so that's the USMCA. Uh, it's the new NAFTA. It's um, about, I think it was ratified last January, so it's not quite yet a year old. Um, and so it's still up in the air to see how much different it really is. Um, but it's something to watch for and listen for with politicians, especially in this election year. Intriguing. Be sure to check your assignments today and fill out the questionnaire on the USMCA. That's all today from the Global Studies News Network. Good day and good news.